Hello, my name is Danny Nolan, and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In the last tutorial we that we spoke about, we introduced you to Chassis Sim Lite and how basically using car templates, we can really cut down the modeling time that you require and how to produce professional standard simulation in a matter of minutes. Now, one thing we did touch upon in that first introductory video was what do you do if you've got a race car but you don't have a template? Believe it or believe it or not, it's actually a hell of a lot easier than, than what you would think. So let's take a case. Uh, let's take a case um, in point. Currently, we've got a Dallara F310 template loaded, and let's just say for the sake of the argument that we uh, let's just say for the sake of the argument that we have a very similar race car to a Dallara F310 template. So typically, what we would do is you click on here, and basically what you're looking for is you're looking for the template that most closely resembles the race car that you want to model. Once again, because it's an open wheeler, we'll just start on the Lara F310 template. Now, the first point is basically we need to put in basically what our changes are going to be. And believe it or believe it or not, it's actually pretty straightforward. Now, in the Chassis Sim Help, uh, when you install Chassis Sim, there's actually a PDF file called Chassis Sim Light Quick Start that'll actually walk you through this step by step. But to quote the old saying, a picture is definitely worth a thousand words. So let's walk through quickly what you'd have to do. Okay, the first thing is basically to change your car masses, your tracks, etc., etc. So let's just say for the sake of the argument that um, our car is going to be a little bit lighter. We'll have a little bit more of a wheelbase. Our tracks will be a little bit more. And our inertias are a and our inertias are a little bit more. We'll keep the CG height and the weight distribution. No, we'll change the weight distribution to 0.4. Okay, so we've just basically put in our um, uh, uh, put in our inertial properties. The next step is basically to dial in basically what our various spring characteristics are. So once again, let's just say we've gone here and let's just say this time around we've got a spring that wasn't covered in our initial list. So to do that, all we've got to do is really just basically type in a spread our appropriate spring rate. And once again, the damper controls are the bump rubber controls are identical to what we discussed in the initial uh, in our initial video. Moving on. Let's have a look at roll bar rates. Now, if you've got a roll bar rate that doesn't directly correlate to what you see here, you just simply click here on the tab, click here to enter bar rate directly. And here, basically, we've got our unit set up as pounds four. So basically, let's just say that I've got a 3,000 pound um, bar rate. So I just basically type that in like that, click on OK, click on OK, and we're done. Ditto, same thing happens at the rear. Let's just say that our bar rate is actually um, a thousand pound springs. We just simply click on OK, click on OK, boom, that's, uh, uh, that's our bar. Now, clicking on our suspension geometry, let's just say that it's not uh, our geometry isn't covered by what we have. That's OK. To do that, all we've got to do is click on Edit Config, and that gives us access to the suspension, um, to the chassis and suspension interface, and we basically enter in our appropriate pickup points. Please note that our suspension datum is the front axle center line of the car on the ground. So you basically measure all points front and rear, front and rear with respect to that. And the nice thing about it is, as you go through and you change, and uh, as you go through and basically um, uh, change points, let's just say that we're going to move the uh, the lower pickup points up by a little bit. We can just simply go analyze configuration. We go to apply calc. Click on OK click on OK and we are done. We do exactly the same process at the, uh, and we do exactly the same process at the rear. Okay, let's just say that our tires are a little bit grippier than what we uh, had before. All we've got to do is we basically basically put in a grip factor of 1.1 or if the tire has a very very different characteristic, this is basically what this tab uh, tab is for. Import V3 ASCII tire file output characteristics, and you'll find a complete PDF file that documents what that is and how to uh, and um, how to use it. But you just basically set up a little text file, and you click on here, and you look for the appropriate import, and away you go. And you do that for both um, the front and the rear. Let's just say that um, with regards to the downforce, that that's going to be a little bit different. 
that's okay. You just simply click on either the front or the rear wings. And you'll see here a little um, uh, thing here. Click here to edit arrow values directly. Basically, what you can do here is that you can basically specify, basically say the amount of kilos of downforce that you want to run. So let's just say that's a thousand kilos worth of downforce. Our drag say is about 220 and our arrow balance, let's just say for the sake of the argument, is going to be about 40%. We put it in our reference speeds and we enter that as a reference condition and Chassis Sim is going to remember all this. So all you've got to do here is basically put in basically what your delta forces for the front downforce, delta uh, rear downforce is, and what your delta drags is. And let's just say for the sake of the argument, we'll just put in 10, 20, and 10. We click on OK, and that's going to basically edit that, uh, and that's basically going to edit that, uh, uh, that's going to basically edit those values um, directly. Then when we're done, this is something very important. We go to file, so we go to file save as, and what we do in the chassis sim technologies folder, you'll see I've created a folder called models. I'll create a new folder here called basically, let's just say for the sake of the argument, this was a formula free hill climb car. And what I do is basically to save that, I'll just call this my F3 hill climb baseline with today's date, um, which is 19th 02 2011. And I just go save, bingo. So basically, what I've just done, that, now the other important thing I need to do is basically obviously input what the appropriate motion ratios in that are measured damper on wheel. This is very important. Most race car manufacturers will give you wheel on damper. Chassis Sim will, will record it as damper on wheel. Once we're happy with all that, we always go to File, Save, and we're done. It's as simple as that. Now, what this route, what this video introduces to you I would, uh, is it introduced, it's a very, very quick guide to what the actual quick start is. Obviously, there are more steps involved. You've got to go out and do race car measurements. But this actually will show you how quite straightforward it is. So, the question has to be asked, though, how do we retrieve what we've just worked on? So, I've just saved it. So, to do that, I simply click Start on Chassis Sim Light. I go to the File menu, and you'll see here, this is the last car file that I've saved. Voila, I load that. That's exactly what we've just been working on. So, as you can see, using these techniques, you can use this as the basis for some very, very powerful modeling techniques. Now, in the coming weeks on the Chassis Sim blog, keep posted, because we're going to be, put, we're going to be running a few initiatives, but also there are going to be a few articles that I'm going to show you how you can take Chassis Sim Lite and really extend it out and actually use it in quite a powerful way. Is it the same as having standard and isn't it isn't it's not the same as having chassis sim standard or chassis sim elite however really chassis sim chassis sim light has been designed for two markets it's been designed for the first market the local race shop who knows they need to use simulation technology but don't know how to do it so we sort of set that up so you can go to your dealer and get a mo uh, and um, get a model but it's also been set up for the smart freelance engineer that if they know what they're doing they can actually use this in a very very powerful way so stay tuned to the Chassis Sim blog for, de uh, for details, and just remember, Chassis Sim is the winner's edge.